On my kicker tonight, I will add a few things to the many that have been said about departed media icon Hilary Boniface Mueno. First, my own impressions based on direct and personal interactions with the late Mueno. The man had a not so hidden distaste for publicity, pomposity, hype, exposure, and generally any type of profile projection that had nothing to do with strictly and entirely his work. So severe was his dislike for publicity that he declined to grant me an interview for my Kenya presidential history documentary, Moi, Mwai, and Mugai. He preferred instead, and I gladly accepted, a note-taking sit-down during which he took my questions and schooled me with some deep historical perspectives of the Kenyan political story. In Hilary Nguyen's death, a chapter is closed on one of the most enigmatic legends to ever walk the media industry in Kenya. For the media operative he was, Hilary Nguyen was shy and openly uncomfortable with cameras, preferring instead to run the industry from its engine room, and almost always an engine room he himself personally designed. For a man that studied physics and mathematics, Mueno was the most unlikely pioneer of the Kenyan media industry. From mathematics and physics, Mueno made his way into journalism, beginning as a fictitious crime reporter called Scoop Nelson in a 1970s South African-inspired novel titled Men from Pretoria. Fiction paved way to reality when Mueno stormed the publishing scene, becoming a champion of many firsts, including the only African-owned and managed independent newspapers south of the Sahara. As high school students in the 90s, Hilary Mueno's weekly review inspired our own eventual journey into journalism. Weekly review, without a doubt, was the Kenyan equivalent of the International Time or Newsweek magazines. Weekly Review was the country's weekly encyclopedia on politics, put together by a meticulous team of reporters and now our main eminent seniors, such as Washira Waruru, Joe Odindo, Kwendo Opanga, Masharia Gaitho, Sarah Elderkin, Vitalis Musebe, Muteginjau, Jaindi Kisero, and Peter Warutere, among others. These journalists that worked under Hilary Nguyeno proceeded to become newsroom leaders in their own right and continue to shape the country's journalism to date. It must be noted too, even if sadly, that the weekly review was never replaced to, death, to date. And I dare say, there is no equivalent of Hilary Nguyeno's weekly review in our print journalism today. Now, quality and independence were the compass of Hilary Nguyeno's journalism. This was reflected not just through the tidy weekly review, but also his broadcast contributions, especially documentaries, such as the Makers of a Nation. And while advancing independent journalism, Hilary Nguyeno successfully walked the middle road coming across as an umpire of the opposing national voices. He was once quoted as advising the government and its critics to, quote, lower their voices so that they can hear one another better. This, we must admit, is timeless advice and wisdom from beyond the grave. Rest in peace, Hilary Nguyeno. That is my kicker.